Hello everyone and welcome back. This is my guide to Act 3. We're going to show you how to quickly and efficiently get through Act 3, including all the key boss fights, of which there are some really difficult ones. If you think you've seen everything the guide has to offer in the first five minutes, you'd be completely wrong. Please do watch to the end where we show you the animated map of all the key places you want to visit. I hope you find this useful, but more importantly, I hope you enjoy. Once we get into town, because this town is so large and you can't use movement skills, we're not going to go to the waypoint. We're going to head straight out to the right as soon as we get to it here. Once we're in this side area, we're trying to find the doorway out to the crematorium. This area is a real nightmare to navigate, and I always have a real hard time with it. But in general, you want to follow these stairs. So as you find a set of stairs, head up them and head around. Once you find a load of stairs that look like they're chained together, you've probably found your exit. Just keep following the chains around, and eventually you'll find a doorway on a big flat area like this. And there we go, crematorium. Once in the crematorium, apply any skill points and grab the waypoint. And then we're trying to find Piety. She's marked with a big quest marker. There is also a trial of ascendancy in this area. I haven't as yet found a sure way of finding Piety every time, so I just look for the exclamation mark, which we've now found, which is just to our right. Once you find Piety, prepare for your fight. She'll take a little while. She's got some ads but she does most of the damage. Once she gets to half health, she'll phase out, but this takes an awful long time, especially if you're not doing an awful lot of damage. She'll fire lightning at you. This isn't really a problem, but those lightning balls hurt and try do try and avoid them by sidestepping them. That can be a problem if you're melee because you're really close to her. As I said, once she reaches half health, she'll port out, and then we can touch this device here to grab Tolman's bracelet where we log out. Once back in town, we'll start in the center. The waypoint's already got for us. We'll talk to these people to grab any items we might want. We head to Clarissa, talk to her, and she will give us the sewer keys, which is a great reward if I do say so myself. And then we can head around here. Now, if you have done all the Trial of Ascendancies for the normal Labyrinth, you can head into the Aspirant's Plaza now to grab the waypoint so that we don't have to walk through town later when we want to do the lab. Yeah. Then head back out to the same exit we went into before, to the slums, and look for the sewer grate, which we probably already know where it is. It's marked by a point now as it's now ready to be opened up by the key. In here, most of the damage is lightning and cold. Those little guys can do a lot of damage, so do, do try and yet. avoid them. What you're after in here is the three busts in the stashes in the floor. The first one is always before the waypoint, and the second two are always after. Head around the arena to the waypoint, and then head upwards. The second stash is always nearby the waypoint upwards. The second one can either be on this side, or it can be close to the exit. I always come this way first just to see if I can spot it. The exit from the sewers is always to the left. Head straight to the left and you'll find it. Once in the marketplace, head to the edge and run around the edge. Note there will be a quest marker in here, you don't need to get it. As you run around the edge, look for a side opening that goes through a load of arches, like this, and follow this through to the waypoint. There is a boss in here that can do a lot of damage, I never fight him because he can do a lot of damage. The catacombs contains a, a trial of ascendancy, we're not going to go in there at this point because I've already got them all. Head to the far right of the arena and then work your way up the wall. If the exit's not there, then continue your way around the arena on the edges anti-clockwise. You'll eventually find the exit, which leads into the battlefront. Once in the battlefront, apply any skill points and then continue on your way. In here, you're looking for the waypoint. Sort of continue left and about midway, where you think is roughly midway through the arena, start to find these raised areas and head around them. And the waypoint is always on one of those raised areas. Once you find the waypoint, do a check on your level. If you're 24 or above, we go out to the docks. If we're not, we go upwards to the Solaris Temple and work our way through there to get to 24. The reason for this is the docks is a high level area, much higher than the rest of the area. And so you'll get the XP penalty if you go in that area below 24. Once we enter the Solaris Temple, head to the bottom of the stairs and go upwards. And we're looking for a set of stairs, which is always through a waypoint area. Once we get to the waypoint in here, find the nearest door to the waypoint that wasn't your entrance and head up through it. Once you've followed this road, try heading upwards as far as possible. And it's normally on your right while you're upwards somewhere. There we go. Head down to Solaris Temple level 2. And in here, head for this wall. And if there's a bit that goes back around itself, follow that. Because that's always the exit in that case. If there isn't, then follow your road round until you find what you're after. Note in this area, you can find areas where you can jump across and save yourself some time. Do remember in this area, we want to get past level 24. So we are going to hit slightly more monsters than we would normally to try and get to that level. As doing so will be massively advantageous when we get to the docks. Nice. Green thing. As we run through the arena, look for the lights on the floor. And you'll find the waypoint. Once you reach this area, if you haven't done the docks already, then 
we won't talk to her. If we have done the docks already, then we'll go and talk to her. Head back to the waypoint in the battlefront and then head out to the docks. Note that I'm still way below level 24. So if there's any monsters on the way that are worth hitting, hit them. To get to the docks is always a fixed way from the waypoint. Head down the stairs and run straight across to your left. You'll eventually come to the door to the docks and enter. In the docks, we're looking for one of the edges, though I do kill a lot more monsters in here than usual because it is a high level area and will level you faster than all the other areas in this region. There is a waypoint here, you don't need to collect it, but if you come across it, you might as well. Once you get close to the objective in this area, you'll see it marked with a normal quest icon. Simply go and open it and grab the thematic sulfite. Once you have this, you can log out. And when we get back into town here, we can go and talk to Hagen to hand in his quest to get the skill book. We're going to head to either Solara's temple, if we haven't done it already, or back to her if we did the docks after her. Or we're going to go to the next part, which I'll show you after this area. When we do talk to her, she'll give us the Infernal Talc, which helps us remove the Fatberg in the sewers. So we're going to head back to the sewers. And near where our waypoint was, there is this big stuck area. Just hit it with a thematic sulfite or whatever it was, and it will open. We then head through this hole into the Ebony Barracks. This area is fixed. We head upwards. After several flights of stairs, we will come to Gravisius. He is a really nasty fight now. So the first problem you have with him is he uses molten shell if you're if you're melee and close to him when you pop the mortal shell you can kill yourself so do try and avoid this wherever possible by staying away from him while that shell is up he will eventually drop these big balls from the air just sort of get out of the way and he'll also throw molotov cocktails at you both of which you want to avoid so again when his molten shell comes up i'm going to stay away from him until it drops off eventually you'll get him to low health and he will die now note that the only reason, the real reason to kill him is for the skill point in this area, so if you're not going to use the skill point in this area, you can avoid him if you wish. I do tend to always want the skill point in this area, though. Once we continue heading upwards, you'll find the exit to this door. Now, this is the only sort of variable part of this arena, because it can be here, or it can be straightforward. Once we enter the area of Lunaris, we just find the doors, run through them, and continue on. Eventually, we'll reach room with chairs, find the carpet, going off to either the left or right, and follow it. That will mark your exit. Straight through here, there's a boss. You can ignore him quite happily. He is a pain in the ass to kill, so I don't bother. Once you get past him, just continue looking for the waypoint and then the stairs downwards. And we now enter Lunara's Temple Level 2. This area can be incredibly dangerous as there are evil ladies Quiety. that fire spikes from her hands. Once you get into this area, do apply any skill points as needed. Once we enter this area, the best way to exit is down from the stairs. It's very rare that the exit isn't somewhere linked to the downwards area. However, if this is the case, you can just follow the ladders back up and then come down the other side. What you're looking for in this area is a yellow stripe heading up into the next level. If you're having trouble with the um, ladies that shoot spikes out of their hands, the best way to get, avoid them is to just run past them and they won't do any damage. Here we are, there's a raised area, we follow it round and then we rinse and repeat until we get to the top of the stairs. There are a number of dead ends in this area, which can be quite frustrating. Sometimes you can work these out by where they appear, as if they head back downwards, then that's definitely not the one you want. They'll also always be on an edge because they have to go upwards, they can't be in the middle, unless the middle area is massive. Once we get to the big pile of stairs, follow the way around that has only one cart. These ha this is two, and that's wrong. As you run around this corner, you'll eventually come to a double set of doors. Once at the double doors, just open them and head through. Note also, having a movement skill that can jump over walls in this area, that can teleport, walk, jump over walls in this area is incredibly beneficial as it will jump through these gates. Once we reach the double doors, we head in and then head to the back edge of the arena where we'll look for a door. Once we find the door, we open it and head up the ramp until we get to the very top and there'll be a door. This next area is the piety fight. It can be very difficult if you don't have correct resists. So do make sure you get some cold and lightning resist for this fight, as she does both. Before we fight her, do make You've sure we've attached any skill points. Crap. This fight is complex and she now will teleport around quite a bit. Dick. If she enters one of these circles, she will level up into a much higher monster to kill. When this happens, you want to avoid her because she can kill you. Like that. Avoid her until she phases back to normal. If you have an area, if you have a weapon with massive area effect, you can use these to destroy the circles so she cannot upgrade. When she's in her ice form, it's sometimes good to hide behind these walls because she can't shoot through them very easily. Do the honorable thing and die. Eventually she will die. It can just take a while. When she dies, she will drop a key and that is used to get into an area in the gardens. At this point, we can log out. Once back in town, we can go around and buy any skill points and things we want. Also, know that we go and talk to Grigor here. This is the first time we'll ever speak to him, and the last in this game, until we level again, as it gives us a skill book, and is there purely to give us that skill book when we kill Piety. Once you've got your skill book, assign the point. 
and I'm going to head back to the Ebony Barracks, where instead of going up the path, we'll go off I to the right, straight thing. from the waypoint. Once you get to the end of the right sided area, you'll hit the Imperial Gardens. If you do have an urgent need to get certain skill gems before you reach level 6, then you want to head to the left and you'll find the library. I'm not going to run this because it's deeply annoying, but speak to the guy in there. He'll send you downstairs, which can be really difficult to find, and then you have to find four golden pages, giving them to him while opening him up to sell you stuff. In here, the key thing to find is this waypoint. Once you find it, look up and then look right. Wherever there are carts going along a path, that's the way you want to go. You're pretty much heading straight lines till you reach dead end and then continue on. Once you get to the locked doors, walk straight through them and get to the Scepter of God. The only reason you can't get through those doors is if you don't have the key from Piety. Once in this area, you're looking for the stairs that head upwards. Once you get about halfway up the tower, there will be a waypoint. You don't need to collect it, so unless I'm right on top of it, I won't bother going for it. You never need to come back here, so it's not really important to grab that waypoint anyway. I tend to avoid the long side areas, as the exit points are never in there. We're now in the upper scepter, so in there somewhere was the um, waypoint. There are so many layers to this tower that it can become quite tedious to level, but do stick with it. It is worth it when you get to the top for the fight that is going to ensue, but it's going to really annoy you. Eventually, after several layers of this tower, you will find this device with lots and lots of pipes sticking up. This can be an indication of the exit, and when that happens, go straight upwards and you'll find the exit. Once you're on the roof of this tower, this is where the boss fight occurs. This boss fight is really nasty and causes a lot of bleed. Sometimes we will have to pull out to survive. His ads are really dangerous. We attack the left-hand side ads first, as we want to dispatch those quickly. This area does do a hell of a lot of damage, so do be careful. Each of his ads have a different skill. That one throws fire, the other one a cyclone. But they are fixed skills, and once you get used to them, you'll know how to fight them. You want to try and stay out of the cyclone, because it does do a lot of damage. So as he comes closer, just kite him away. Once he's down, you'll get the lightning person. Try and avoid the spikes by staying away from the towers while hitting him repeatedly. Now, when you, before you start this fight, if you don't have up-to-date life of mana flasks, I suggest you get them. We get one of the spike ladies. She's incredibly dangerous if you don't have a lot of damage reduction, which at this part of the game, practically no one does. Cannot do this yet. Ow, 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 ow. As I said, very, very dangerous. Then we get someone who does Reeve or Cleave, one of the two. He doesn't do an awful lot of damage. You can just stand and tank him normally. If you do cast spells, that may not be possible, so attack him from range. This boss. Whenever he does touch a god, we'll hit the ground, and that will one-shot you, so do make sure you're away from him when that happens. The second part of the fight, he will fire these little ghosts around. Just avoid them by sort of circling around him or hiding behind the arena's obstacles. Again, touch a god, get out of the way, and back to it. This fight is in two phases. The first phase is this one. This is the least dangerous. The Light of Divinity, light of Divinity is another one. Instead of touch a god, same thing, slams the ground. Once you take away his last hit points, he will port to an area in the arena, close to here actually, and drop some lightning on the ground. Try and avoid that lightning damage for now, because it will put a shock on you, which will make you easier to kill. Once he's out of the ground, stay inside his bubble as much as you can, because outside that rain will kill you very, very rapidly. It will apply bleed to you quite frequently, so do make sure your flasks are up or you have some other kind of skill to keep your life up. Here I'm using Enduring Cry to bring my life back up. And that is only just sustaining me. Once he's dead, run outside the door of the aqueduct. While we run through this area, I will go over the map. In Act 3, we have three trials of ascendancy. These are located in the crematorium, the catacombs, and the imperial gardens. The crematorium has fire traps, the catacombs blade traps, and the imperial gardens dart traps. Kill points granted for the following quests. Victoria's secret, which is for grabbing the busts in the sewers, and Piety's Pets for killing Piety in the Lunaris Temple level 2. When it comes to optional areas, we only run the Catacombs if we want to get the Trial of Ascendancy, and we only go to the Library and Archives if we want to get skill gems prior to getting them from Lily Roth in Act 6. It should be noted that both the Library and Archives are on the same pinpoint on the map, and that's why you're only seeing two flashy dots. And before I forget, the evil bird boss, you don't need to kill it, it gives you nothing, so just skip it. And with that last snippet of advice, it's time for me to say so long, farewell, I'll be the same goodnight. Oh, and catch you next time. You've been watching Altec 2K. Thank you for watching.